13, 14, 15, 2 until 19. It's a very sensitive timing. That time is uh, he is uh, much changed. So start his uh, uh, continued training. Uh, 16 years old, he start crash teaching. He teaching in the all is a Hill High School student. Even he is a uh, he is uh, academic teacher coming to join to training Hanando. After that, he go to USC. While I was attending college, taking full uh, 16 units, I decided to open a club. Starting one club was not enough. So we opened clubs in UC San Diego, UC Riverside, UCLA, Cal State Fullerton, and UC Irvine. It's very first day, it was about the honesty and integrity of what Quantico was about, and the honesty and integrity of what Grand Master was about in there. The, what you will learn, it's an honor. And it was so much more than the quote that I taught before that that was just disappointing. One of the highlights was always the TNT week, which was two days of just pure hell. Just working out constantly straight through, sort of like the uh, class we had at the beginning of the year that hopefully uh, all the West LA students had a chance to attend. The, um, but to a, a higher degree. At least one guy threw up uh, about halfway through and then came back in. You know, I, I had to stand in horse stance and have one of my best friends, Dean Kuvin, he's uh, standing on my legs, and we had to go the length of the football. And we, we had everybody doing that, and if anybody fell down trying to go the length of the football field, while you're standing with your hands out in front of you like this, and the guy on top of you is the hands out like, if you fell down, you had to go back and start over. And we did this, you know, for hours, and, and it just unbearable pain that you couldn't move. I loved it immediately. The first day, I was like, yeah, this is great. 굉장히 좋았어요. 지금 생각하면은 어, 내 라이프 중에 우리 아들이 대학교 다닐 때그 칼레지 그 클럽에서 그 학생들이 와서 항상 같이 무슨 일이 되면은 집에 와가지고 탐색해도 음식 만들고 또 밤새도 놀고 항상 이렇게 집에 와 오고 그럴 때가 굉장히 좋았던 것 같아요. Let me just. Uh... You know, talk about my sisters just a little bit here. Um, <laughs> I've left a legacy in my high school. So it was not easy for my sisters. Um, my uh, sisters were never asked out on dates. So they had, she had, they had no boyfriends. I date a lot of guys, but I never brought one home. They already knew him. In high school, he had the Pondo Club. So they knew Henry Lee. He was Henry Lee then. then. So nobody really <laughs> intimidated, so they didn't really. Uh, come, you know, senior year, uh, I wanted them to experience the full experience of high school. Uh, so they have, I wanted them to really attend the prom. Actually, we didn't really want to go, but he insisted you have to go to the prom and experience because guys did ask, but I said no because my brother was very strict. and. So he had one of um, his college students, because that's when he had all the intercollegiate clubs. I went with a UCLA student. So, you know, I guess it turned out okay with the fact that, you know, for high school girls, I mean, it's a, it's a big step to go ahead and have a, a, a college student uh, escort them. Uh, so. <laughs> In the uh, late 80s, early 90s, our family had certain, certain trials. My mother decided to separate and she left the house. And while she left the house, 
myself and two of my sisters decided to back my mother. My younger brother stayed with my father and helped him take care of the business. Um, I, I, I did not want to teach Horangdu. I had to rethink if I really wanted to commit. Because partly committing to Horangdu means committing to my father. So if I did not believe him anymore, then I couldn't do Harangdu. So I decided to move in to a small bachelor apartment in a, in a not so good area of Koreatown. One day, my father wanted to come see me. You must understand, since I left the house in 83 to go to college, He's never come to see where I lived. And I was living in the worst condition. We had dinner, we went back to my, my, uh, my, my apartment. He sits down and he says to me, he says, son, when we were young, there was no food. There were seven children. We fought all the time. All I knew was two things, fighting and hunger. And I came here to this country for you, for my family. And there is no way that you're going to live like this. I'm not going to have it. He opened his briefcase and he pulled out an envelope with $3,000 in cash and he gave it to me. He said, son, you move today. Today. And um, I was very grateful, but I, I told my father, I said, Dad, I, I need this. I need to do this. And I gave the money back. And I think he understood. So it was from that day on, I decided I'm, I'm going to commit, recommit to what I'm doing, and never look back, never think of death, never think of quitting, only thing is forward. And so, my mother cannot break from my father either. They're truly inseparable. My way is life in Parando. What I do, of course, this one is uh, sometimes is hard to hard time and the good time, and she had to always to support my way. So she do helping help for my life. I love her and uh, I love to all is uh, handling this life. I got hooked up with one of our students at headquarters. We had some money. He had a furniture company. And he wanted to help me and invest money in opening a school. So I looked all around, all around and I found the school. And like a week before I was ready to sign the lease papers, the person who was going to invest money pulled out. So what can I do? So I, um, this was the last thing I wanted to do, but I had no one to turn to. So I, picked up the phone and called my father. And he knew from the tone of my voice, the only words out of his mouth was, how much, son? <laughs>